Okay, so this is the second video in the series on 3D fire and gas mapping using Detect 3D. And in this video, we're going to look at fire zones. There are three aspects of fire zones we're going to cover today. They are risk categories, using multiple fire zones, and calculating the external or open volume of a fire zone. So let's first look at risk categories, and to help explain them, I'm going to use the same detector layout that I defined in the overview of Detect 3D video. I'm going to load that project file into the software by going to File and Open Project and selecting the D3D project file. For those of you who haven't seen the first video, just go to insightnumerics.com where we have links to all our YouTube videos. Just as a reminder, there are eight flame detectors in this project, and we can see them on the project tree and in the main window. And the zero visibility ISO volume looks like this. There's also one fire zone in this project, and we can see it on the project tree and in the main window. And we can also have a look at the coverage statistics by clicking on the table icon. Now, these statistics are for the fire zone as a whole, but there may be areas in the fire zone that have a different risk category than the zone itself. We can define multiple subzones to mark out these different risk areas. To do this, I'm going to activate risk zones on the fire zone and select risk grade C. You can see that there are three preset risk categories and you can change the names of these to whatever you like in the software, but for now I'm going to keep it simple and stick with a preset ABC. As I select grade C, you can see that the color of the fire zone has automatically updated to the color associated with the risk grade. C is yellow, B is orange, and A is red. If we look at our statistics now, we can see that they have been automatically broken down into risk category. The top statistic is always for the fire zone as a whole, but we have the ABC categories below it, and because the fire zone is risk grade C, then for now the C statistics are the same as the overall statistics for the fire zone. Let's define a couple of subzones to mark out some higher risk areas. To do this, I need to select the fire zone, right click, and select add subzone, and use the pick tool to select the points where I want the subzone to be. I can preview the subzone to check it's in the right place. And I can also set the risk category, but here it's defaulted to risk grade A, which is what I want anyway. So I'll just add it to the project. Now let's have a look at the statistics. We can see the top line is again the statistics for the fire zone as a whole, and as we would expect, these haven't changed. But we can look at the risk grades A and C coverage statistics, and we can see that C is no longer the same as the overall statistics, because not all of the fire zone is now grade C. Let's add a few more subzones. Let's add another one at grade A. I'm just manually inputting the coordinates here. This looks good. And then let's add one final subzone at grade B. Slightly change that, a bit lower. Okay, so now we have risk grades A, B, and C defined in the fire zone. And we can see the full breakdown of coverage statistics here, which we can easily export to PDF or Excel. So you can see how Detect3D allows you to mark out different risk zones within each fire zone very quickly and easily. Let's now move on to our second topic of this video, which is using multiple fire zones. Detect3D really doesn't limit how many different object types you have in a fire and gas mapping simulation. In any one simulation, you can define multiple geometries, multiple detectors and detector types, multiple contours and ISO volumes, and of course multiple fire zones, and everything's handled automatically. So let's say, for example, that this process area isn't one fire zone, but two separate fire zones. What we can do is delete the fire zone that we've defined, and just add two more fire zones. Just inputting the coordinates and previewing the first one. 
then I'm just going to use the pick tool to define the second one. When we view our coverage results, we now have separate statistics for the two fire zones. And of course we can add separate ISO volumes and contours for each one. We can also add as many subzones as we want to each fire zone. So this is useful when you have a geometry that comprises multiple fire zones. You don't need multiple simulations, you can just perform the entire analysis in a single simulation. It's also helpful if I want to see the coverage results at a certain height above ground level. For example, if I wanted to see the statistics at 2 meters height, I can just add a very thin fire zone at this height, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm selecting the Z coordinate to be between 2 and 2.1 meters, and once that's added to the project, I now have the coverage results at 2 meters height. So very simple and quick, but a very powerful capability to define multiple fire zones in a single project. Finally, let's look at the third topic of our video, which is open or external volumes in the fire zone. This is a very important aspect of any mapping study. If we switch on the zero visibility ISO volume, but switch off the geometry, we can see that the ISO volume includes the internal volume of the geometry. Now if we were just to ignore this fact, then no matter how good our layout was, we can never reduce the zero visibility region to zero, because we're always going to be penalized by the fact that the detectors can't see the internal volume. In Detect3D, you're not penalized for this. When you add a fire zone, the internal volume is calculated automatically. And for this fire zone, we can see it here by selecting the fire zone and checking Show Internal Volume. Note that this is the internal volume just of the fire zone and not of the whole geometry. Now this may look simple or obvious to us, but in fact the calculation of the internal volume is extremely complex. When we, as humans, look at this geometry, it's obvious to us what's outside and what's inside. But the software just sees a bunch of unordered, messy triangles, so we've created new and very powerful algorithms at Insight Numerics just for this internal volume calculation. Typically the calculation time for this kind of fire zone is less than a second, so while it's very complex, it's also extremely fast. The benefit is that the volume statistics are no longer a percentage of the total volume of the fire zone, but of the open or external volume of the fire zone. We can see this effect by looking at the statistics table. If we like, we can choose to ignore the internal volume calculation. In other words, we can assume the fire zone is completely open. The statistics automatically update, and when the internal volume calculation is ignored, the zero visibility goes from 10% right up to 26%. So you can see that it's very important to take into account this internal volume calculation. Just like all the aspects of the fire zones we've seen today, this is very powerful and very fast, and all at your fingertips with Detect3D. Okay, so that concludes this video about fire zones and 3D mapping using Detect3D. Hopefully now you've got a great knowledge about the subject and have seen the power of Detect3D at work. Thanks very much for watching, and as ever, you can find more at www.insightnumerics.com.